Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, where we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive through message is the call of God. So turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings 19.19. Now, <clears throat> the call of God is very important a topic, one of the most important topics of you and our lives. And it's to be taken very serious. Um, I've touched on it in a couple of videos that you, know, you should watch. Uh, Price Tag of Commitment was one of them. Where I reference the call of God and what it requires. Prerequisites God expects before you do it, before you call. Um, the other video is, Lord, let me, Lord, save me, but let me keep my pigs. And that's referring to the call of God, too. Some things you gotta let go of. Now, in Isaiah 19, 19 excuse me, 1 Kings 19, 19, we're going to read about the call of Elisha. Not Elijah, Elisha. And uh, we read here in 1 Kings 19, 19. Now, to give you the backdrop, Elisha had defeated the false prophets of Baal all 850 and and slow him. And at this point, he's uh, Jezebel vowed to take his head, and he got discouraged and ran to a to a cave with Dullam and hid out there. And uh, in that cave, God let him know that he's going to raise up a new prophet, a new king. In, in a new prophet in his place to be specific. And he was going to bring uh, an enemy, raise up an enemy too, to come against Israel, another king. And that prophet did, to take his place was Elisha. Now, God told him there's 7,000 knees that haven't bowed to Baal. And Elisha was, you know, whining to God, saying, I'm all alone here and fighting for your honor of your word, the integrity of your word. God is nobody loving and God let him know there's 7,000. What a sad sight to see a man broken, a great prophet like Elijah, because no one else stood up alongside him. He didn't know there were 7,000 out there. So God's going to train him, Elisha, to take Elijah's place. All right, so we read in 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he had with him the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. That was Elisha's call right there. He just threw the mantle on him. Now he could have took the man off and threw it down and went and went and kept on plowing. See, you got what's called free will. That's what you learned in the parable of the seed song. Three fourths of them that were called had free will. They didn't make it. Only a fourth of the three quarters made it in the parable of the seed song. Made it to completion, fit for heaven. The rest going to hell. The other three quarters. Then that's the call. And we ain't even talking about the ones he never bothered to call at all. It's just going, like I said, several videos. Eat crap, die, go straight to hell. God didn't call him at all. Best kind, actually, those are the happiest sinners. With no conscience, no nothing. They, God doesn't mean anything to him. The Bible said, no one coming to the Father, say the Spirit drawn. God's the initiate of the call process. If you 
want to come to God, it's because God wants you to come to Him. Not because you choose to come to Him. Otherwise, you will have no, no uh, desire whatsoever to come to God. He's the initiator. Always remember that. It's no accident I said it a thousand times. All you out here sitting here watching Brother Jay, I believe a call. Now what you do with the calling is free will. You could be like that parable of the seesaw and not make it three quarters of it. You know, you get in where you fit in. But I believe you call. Now he throws the mantle on him. And let's see what Elijah's Elisha's response was to Elijah's passing by and uh and receiving the mantle of the call. And Elijah passed by him. This is verse 19, 19. First Kings. And Elisha passed by him and cast his mantle up on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. Oh, he has a precondition on following. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what have I done today? He said, Go, man. You, it's a free country. You ain't, you ain't got to, you know, you can, you can stay with your mom, dad, for all I'm concerned. That ain't got nothing to do with me. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people. And they did eat. Then arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. He burned the bridge. He took the family plow and the oxen that, that helped with the plow and burned it. In other words, it's like I cross a bridge over a raging river and then I turn around and burn the bridge after me. There's no going back. He made sure there was no going back. He killed off the family business. Now that was Elisha's response to the call. And he ministered for 11 years with Elijah and got to see Elijah go up into heaven in the whirlwind of fire, a chariot of fire with horses and received double the power of Elisha. And he did double the miracles under the power of God. Now, he had the proper response. Now let's go to, uh, we can go to Mark 1 16 through 20. Let's turn to Mark 1 16. See, the call of God is not nothing to play with. It's, it's like the lotto, if you are a I've said it in many videos, time and time again. Don't take it for granted. Don't abuse it. You should cherish the call of God. It's not something to be scoffed at. Or abuse. Okay, Mark 1, 6, 1, 16. Now this is this is uh, the New Testament. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon Peter. This is Jesus walking. He saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. They had a fishing. They had a fisherman business, a fishing business. That was their business. And it was a profitable business. They did well. They were middle class. Upper middle class was the fishermen. They were no poor broker of fishermen. They had a fishing business that was lucrative. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. Here's the call of God. Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of me. They said, Oh, yeah, thank you, Christ, but... Uh, your know, business is great right now, so you know I don't know. Following you was pretty much of a risk, and we won't walk away from this uh, lucrative business of our families here. And follow you, I don't know about it. You see what they did? And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. 
They had the same response that we just read Elisha had to Elijah, the prophet. And straightway, this is verse 18, 18 Mark 118. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left, listen, called. He called them. This is God in the flesh. This is God Almighty. This is the Son of God. Incarnate. And look at the response they gave. They left and forsook. And straightway he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants. Servants. You had to have money to have servants. You had money to have slaves. <laughs> you got to you. It was, there's no such thing as, as a, a person with servants or slaves. It's, you've got to have money. They left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. They forsook all. Now they asked Jesus, and they said, well, Jesus, we, for, we forsook all, but Jesus just said, hey, anybody they will come to, by way of any man come after me. Hate not wife, mother, brother, sister. Yeah, even his own life. And uh, do not forsake all and take up a cross and follow me. You cannot be my disciple, my disciplined learner. That's the beginning of it. I taught on that price tag and commitment. Like I said, that very thoroughly. And they said to Jesus, the disciples, well, Jesus, you know, master, we forsook God. And he said, no man that ever forsook lands, families, whatever, businesses that shall not receive a hundredfold in this lifetime and also the world to come. So what God takes from the left hand of which he expects you to forsake, he gives back a hundredfold. But like I saw on paradoxes in the, in the uh, video of humility, you do it expecting nothing in return. That's the whole catch now they forsook all disciples had the right attitude now Luke 9.62 talking about he that put his hand to the plow you can read it for yourself Luke 9.62 he that put his hand to the plow and look it back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven there's no looking back once you forsake don't look back you got to get rid of pig and take it to the slaughterhouse. God ain't trying to sell. Let me tell you. So Jesus said, "I didn't come to save the world, but my few did are chose out the world." He said, "I didn't come to uh, save your family. I came to set family at variance. Mother against father, sister against brother." Christ came. For, he said, "I came to divide." Not everybody in your family, friends, or whatever in your circle is going to be saved. They gonna, some are actually going to be your mortal enemies. Because they are the children of the devil. And they're going to reveal themselves. So you have to be willing to cut them off. That was what Jesus was talking about. If your right eye offends you, your hand, as much as it hurts to cut your eye out, just out your head or your arm off or your leg, better that than going in the, better that to call going there. He said maimed in the heaven than with all your body parts intact. As much pain as it takes to cut them, y'all have to. I practice what I preach. I've gotten actually I've gotten real surgical with it and, and very uh very quick now on the trigger. And not like before. As I was much suffering and pain, I would keep the people around that was literally torturing me in the spirit that God didn't want around. That I wasn't willing to let go of. The cross teaches you might have to go alone and be willing to go alone. And then God will reward you usually at the end. And replace you with family. Might not be the same family structure you had, but it'd be, you know, it'll be family. Just as close. Or friends. Replace you with friend or wife or husband. Better than the one you forsook. Or kids. You might have your own children turn against you and you have, <laughs> you know, 
You might marry into a family with, with kids who are already that love you. But you have to be willing, like I said, to go God's way and trust Him with the call on your life. Now, Ephesians 1.4, we'll go to Ephesians 1.4. See, the call of God, the Bible says, is without recall. There's no turning back. Remember Lot? Read Genesis. Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. Sure, her heart was with her family and kids and was getting fire rained on them, along with the other millions of people in Sodom and Gomorrah. God was wiping out for their wicked, wickedness that rose to heaven. Their stench that came up before God, where he said, I gotta, now I gotta wipe you out. But her heart was back there with her family. And the angel specifically instructed her to look, look forward, don't look back. She looked back and became a pillar of salt as an example to any of us. Then look back. Like I said, Jesus said, any man that put his head to the plow and look it back ain't fit for the kingdom of heaven. So you stay like a horse with blinders forward, no matter what the cost. That's the price tag of commitment. All right, Ephesians 1, 4. It says here, Paul, according as he hath, Pastor Paul, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to the adoption of the children the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to his good pleasure of will God called us before the foundation of the world before the before the earth was created he whispered you and I name now like I said many are called and few are chosen God's going to fill up the void of heaven left by uh, Satan and the crew, the third, with uh, the redeemed. That's us. To show, show us off as denizens of heaven. Excuse me. Many are called, few are chosen. Make sure you wanted to chosen. You, you're called. I believe you're called. Like I said, everybody's sitting here looking at Brother Jay right now, staring as I stare into uh, this, this black hole with the camera. I have no idea how many hundreds, thousands, millions of people around the world are watching this. But believe me, you me, of all stripes, that is too as well. Religious as well as non-religious, pagans, heathens. I have no clue. The worst sort of sinners. But you're caught. Good, good and bad. Cops as well as villains. You're watching. Soldiers as well as baby terrorists. <laughs> but you're called. And what you do with the call, you prove what type of heart, what type of earth you are. So don't take God's calling for granted. Heaven's going to be filled with a lot of rejected call. Make sure you aren't one of them. And make sure you, if you are called, that your proper response is a steward. As you've heard me teach several videos now on if you follow Street Priest Ministries. Brother Jay's teaching on proper stewardship, tithes, offerings, first fruits, alabaster belong to the Lord. Don't think you're going to your called self going to get into heaven another way of climbing over the banister without learning to be a proper steward. So if this message has blessed you, God bless you, that it bless you. You are called. Respond properly to the call and don't take it for granted. God bless you around the world. Uh, good evening, good night, good day around the world. In Jesus' name.